Our special guest is a real renaissance man, actor, uh, musician, and still going strong. Please welcome Mr. Conrad Janis, ladies and gentlemen. I thought that the picture held up well. I mean, for what it is, I thought it was very entertaining, and it was well made, and uh, you were great, and, uh, and uh, it was very, very enjoyable. Did, does everyone agree with you? Six years ago, we made this Mike. Film. and uh, we made it, of course, at 20th Century Fox. John Brom being the director, I think he did a wonderful job with the uh, mise en scène. The the look of the film is really exactly. Terrific. And uh, you think about the fact that it was a, not a high budget film. I mean, Montgomery was not a you know big A star or anything. Like no, that. he's no. a well known actor. He was married to Dinah Shore at the time, right? And uh, he had been a Western actor, uh, right. you know, just on um, mm -hmm. horse, horse and uh, right, right, you know, shoot 'em ups. Yeah. And this was a, a big change for him and a good job for him, and he wanted to do a good job on it. And John Brown, of course, was one of the uh, guys who exiled from Germany, got out from under the uh, right. German government there, and came over here along with Billy Wilder and all of those people. Mm -hmm. He was not a big eight-time director, but he did direct. He directed The Lodger. Yeah, the Lodger, which, Hangover Square, yes, The Locket, uh, all Singapore. very good noir yes, films. Yes, absolutely. And he had a good feel for that. And I suppose uh, it, when you talk about German expressionism earlier, mm -hmm. I suppose that's a part of it. Oh um, yeah, I think I think the look that he gave it, particularly, uh, you know, that there there were no continuity problems with the Santa Ana wind. Every scene outside had the wind machines going. <laughs> yes, it, was, yes, it did. It, it, but, but, well, that was it was quite good. It was quite yeah, effective. Absolutely. And absolutely. Uh, the the acting from the the uh, supporting actors, Florence Bates is a wonderful actress. She yeah. was a Gorgon. <laughs> I mean, she was great in this. What are your recollections? I mean, here you were, you were what, 19 years old? No, I was, I was less than that. I think yeah. it was 17. 17 years old, okay. So here you are working with people like Cordner and Bates and all of this. What, did you get, did someone from Fox see you on the, on the Broadway stage and sign you? How did that all happen? Well, I, I had done, I had started on Broadway when I was 13. And I did a show on Broadway, which ran until I was 16, which we, we took on tour, and I came back. And when I got back to New York, uh, af after having been now an actor for three years, uh, I was very happy about the idea that I had found something that I really wanted to do. And I wanted to get out of school all my life. I was to go the whole Didn't we all want to? <laughs> well, I, I was bound and determined. So by the time I got back from being on the road, uh, at 16, in those days, you could take out what they were called working papers. Right. You didn't have to go back to school. So I did that, and I never went to high school. Mm -hmm. So I, it, it, was, it, was, it worked out perfectly, and I was working all the time in, um, in either uh, the theater on Broadway or in films out uh, in California. And I came out and did a, uh, a film called Snafu, which was based on a George Abbott Broadway hit. And uh, Billy Redfield played the part on Broadway, and then it was during the war, and he got drafted, so he couldn't do the movie. But I was underage, and I could do the movie. Right. So I wasn't in the army. I hadn't been drafted or anything like that, so I got the part. Mm -hmm. And that was the first movie I made for Columbia. Then I went back to New York, and I did some more Broadway plays, and I came out to California. And I did a film with Jeannie Crane, which played on uh, a television, uh, uh, I think uh, uh, Robert Osborne had it. It's called Margie, and right, it was a, right. it's quite quite a lovely film. Jeannie Crane is wonderful in it. And then they put me on the contract to Fox from that film, and this was the next film I did at Fox. Now, did you sign the ubiquitous seven-year contract yes, with exactly. all the raises and exactly. all that? Right. Except that I had come from New York. I had done Broadway plays, so they they thought of me differently. They thought of me as a you know Broadway actor, mm -hmm. as opposed to. Uh, some, somebody they had found in Hollywood for right, the country. Right. Well, the standard contract started at $75 a week, and then at the end of the first year, you went to $100 a week. And at the end of seven years, you were making $250 a week. And they had uh, Jeannie Crane, for instance, was under that kind of a contract. And when she did Margie, where she was solo starred above the title mm -hmm. uh, for a Daryl F. Zanuck film, Zanuck only put his name on four films even though he was the head of all production right. for Fox. 
He only put his name on four films a year, and Margie was one of them. And Jeannie Crane was strong, and it was a tenth starring role. She was making $250 a week under contract when she made that role. I was making $750 a week because I had come from Broadway. And they thought, oh, well, he's a Broadway actor. We have to pay him more. So, so, so I have to ask you, Conrad, as a New York actor, you're coming out here to Hollywood, and you know, you've done Broadway, and that was when Broadway was, well, Broadway. Right. And so, so here you are working with John Brom, uh, Teutonic, probably uh, from that school of directors. It was very authoritarian. You were, you were 17. How was the chemistry between you and Mr. Brom? <laughs> it was not good at all. He didn't like me, and I didn't like him. <laughs> we, had, we had a lovely time. Well, this is a, this is a, a, a genre American film. I mean, this is certainly the, is. I, uh, all it's a style. The, the Billy Wilder and the the German directors understood the whole atmosphere of the film. Right. It was still a strictly American kind of film. As a matter of fact, uh, there was a lot of trouble on the film because we had already done half of the film, mm -hmm. and the the man who was the boss of the nightclub played in the film by Marvin. Marvin Miller. Miller right. That part was originally played by John Ireland, mm -hmm. and they had shot the entire John Ireland sequence. Mm -hmm. And Zanuck saw it, decided he didn't like it, mm -hmm. fired Ireland, and hi hired uh, Marvin, Marvin Miller. Miller. And I noticed in, in, in this particular time that when they start playing the scene mm -hmm. in the nightclub where he's talking to Marlowe, right. they do it in, in uh, reverse angles so that you know that Marvin Miller is talking to George Montgomery, but George Montgomery is talking to John Ireland. Right, right. They didn't want to waste that <laughs> no, film. No, no. Yeah. Well, they already had that in the can. Exactly. So they didn't have to reshoot exactly. that. Exactly. But exactly. they had to reshoot everything. Then, then there were two shots with it together. Yeah. So naturally, they had to shoot that. Yeah. But that was a terrific expense for what ostensibly was a B picture. Yeah, low budget film at yeah. 71, 71 minutes. So yeah. I, I do think. Uh, that you did nail it by saying that Brahm really captured that look, uh, and and again the the character actors like uh, yeah. Courtner and uh, old Housley Stevenson, Onslow Stevens' father. Right. Right. I always remembered him from Dark Passage, the plastic surgeon. You know, ever <laughs> see a botched plastic job? You know, close up of his face. Uh, they, they really nailed that. So uh, from there. Uh, did you leave Fox, or what? What did they do with you after the break? Well, they didn't know what to do with me. Yeah. Because I was, I was. Everybody else of my age, Barbara Lawrence, Marilyn, Norma Jean Baker, mm -hmm. later Marilyn Monroe, all Susan Peters, mm -hmm. who later married Howard Hughes, right. were, were all uh, under contract to Fox and going there every day, taking acting lessons taking singing lessons, voice, all of which I could have used, right. but they didn't give them to me because I had come from Broadway and they didn't think I needed them. So uh, they had me on the contract, but they didn't have any, they didn't know what to do with me because mm -hmm. I wasn't a standard juvenile. Right. And, and they didn't have a juvenile at the time other than me, and then they finally replaced me with, uh, with uh, Bob Wagner. Ah, okay. Okay. That's and he came in and did that Sousa film with uh, Clifton Webb. Right. So it's really interesting. They, the fact that you were from New York on Broadway, they, they kind of put pigeonholed you in a separate category. I remember my, my right. pal Dick Erdman got yes. signed out of high school, went to Warner Brothers, and he said, I went to the University of Warner Brothers. Right. I got taught how to box, how to fence, how to dance, how to do And that was what the studios normally did in that they day. But that. They, they excluded you because they figured you were you were above that sort of thing. Well, yeah, yeah. I wasn't as tall, yeah. but they, yeah. because I had come from New York and I had done I had done five Broadway plays by the time I had come out to and, and gone on the contract with Bob. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So uh, they didn't think I needed it, but of course I certainly could have used it.